The Girl from the Village, a novel by Patricia Asedek Bega. Chapter 2 One tended to have a different view on life when one's stomach was full. Ada had been stressed from the day's work. Customers had kept coming in to drop off their fabrics and leave their measurements. She knew everything had to be ready before the 22nd of December, which was when she normally closed up her shop to enjoy the Christmas festivities properly, as the season deserved. There had been that, as well as how exhausting it had been explaining to three different women that it was impossible to recreate their chosen styles with the materials they were providing. The last thing she wanted was last-minute arguments. Some people expected her to squeeze water from stones, spending as little money as possible, yet demanding spectacular results. Ada knew from experience of past years that it would end up being the 23rd of December when she could finally put the closed for Christmas sign on the door of her shop. People would still try to get her on the phone, some even going to her house with one excuse or the other for trying to get her to work all night for their dresses to be ready on time. Good thing that she was also known for her no actually meaning no. The conversation she had had with Chinenye in her shop earlier on suddenly came to mind. The woman and her three children had appeared with each child carrying a plastic bag and the woman a magazine that she'd proceeded to unceremoniously open on her work table, ignoring the fact that Ada had been up to her neck in work. There had been materials stacked all over the place and notes with styles and measurements pinned to each of them. Chin and Ye had then proceeded to bring out two materials from the bag that her daughter was carrying, which had caught Ada's attention and left her lost for words. Contemplating them, it had been difficult to choose which was more hideous. If there was a contest for ugly materials, the judges wouldn't even have to take a vote. Ada, I've brought my styles and on time, so you won't put me through the trauma of last year, Chin and Ye had said. Ada had taken the magazine from her, refusing to be once again drawn into the argument of the previous year when the woman had expected her to dress the six members of her family in 24 hours and had then acted all offended when Ada had refused to work on Christmas Eve. Chin and Ye had made sure to let everyone who cared to listen know how wicked Ada was. So which do you want to use for each style? Ada had asked thinking that any style chosen in this case would not make the slightest difference. What do you mean? You have to combine them together in each design, Chin Enye had said. That's the new fashion in Lagos. My sister sent the materials to me, and she told me they were sold together on purpose. Be careful with them. They're very expensive, not like some of the things you have here. Ada's eyes had widened in shock as Chin and Ye had eyed the packs of fabrics in her shop with evident distaste. Ha! The new trend in which Lagos? Lagos, Nigeria, or Lagos in... Ada had asked, trailing off and shaking her head in amazement at how delusional people could get. The colour combination of each cloth had been difficult to look at separately. If one person had to wear both at the same time, their village would trend on every single social media platform, and not in a good way. Part of her wanted Chin and Ye to actually wear it so people would stare at her, and the same shock that she was doing at that precise moment. But one look at the horrified face of Mercy, the woman's daughter, was enough to make her at least attempt to prevent that disaster from happening. Those kinds of events were stories recounted years later in the office of a very expensive therapist. Ada, sometimes you say things that make me question if the references you keep throwing around about the exquisite clientele you've worked for are true, Chin and Ye had said indignantly. This is publicity for you. People will ask us who made it for us, and I will do you the favour of letting them know that it's your work. Do you know how much some pay for that kind of exposure? Please don't associate me with this, Ada had replied. I feel it's more up Mama Ngozi's alley. As you see, I'm swamped, and I'm afraid that I can't accept your commission after which you will go around the village blaming me for people laughing at you and your daughter. I'm even afraid of looking at what the boys have in the other bags. No, Mama Ngozi's the person for this job. 
After a few choice words had been sent Ada's way, the woman had stormed out of her shop, kids in tow. Ada chuckled as she recalled the events. Mama Ngozi was a last resort for everyone. She had been known to destroy even the simplest design, and she had her work cut out for her with the terrible pattern of the materials the woman had proudly presented. Smiling, she looked up from her food, wanting to share the anecdote with Charity, and ready to make a bet that Chininye would return the following day, with a humbler attitude to try to convince her to accept her order. It was the song and dance of each year. Charity had been quiet during the meal, offering one-syllable answers to her questions. Her friend was of a reserved nature, but Ada knew that something was bothering her. They had been childhood friends, and now were both in their early forties, so had weathered a lot of storms together through the years. Charity, what's wrong? I just worry about Bernadette, her future. Charity replied. I didn't expect her to fail her exams, and now I'm concerned about her staying a whole year at home. I don't want her to lose focus. The one must go to university. Clara's daughter has come back from Lagos for Christmas, and Bernadette's spending too much time with her. I have no idea what she's filling her head with, just like I've never understood what exactly it is that the girl does in Lagos. Every time I ask Clara, the story I get is different. She's failed the entrance exam for university three times. Would you be comfortable with such an association? Today, Obiageli reminded me of the plight of Ego, Dorcas's daughter. Are you paying attention to the village gossip now? Ada asked. You know she enjoys helping people wash their dirty linen in public over and over again, so they forget about all the scandals her own family has been involved in. Or have you forgotten that Cosmos, her own son, was part of that gang that was featured on the news last year? She told everyone that he'd gone away to stay with her brother, but we all knew where he's spending his days. Please, Charity, you have nothing to feel bad about. Bernadette is not Ego, so don't let people get into your head. I too was very surprised with her results, but it happens. After all, all but three of her classmates will be repeating the exams. Yours were not the only cries of lament the village heard the day the results came out. You have no idea the number of parents I've consoled in these past weeks. Even those that knew for certain that their son or daughter was going to fail still cried out in shock. I had to keep a straight face in some instances. I just had an idea. Ada exclaimed, "You know, a lot of people come to the village to spend the Christmas period here. One of my customers asked if I knew a girl willing to go back with them to the city to help with the house chores. It might be a good plan for Bernadette. They could pay for extra lessons for her to prepare for the exam once again, and you wouldn't have to worry about those expenses. I know that you've been calculating and calculating in that notebook of yours to see how much you'd need to cover the tuition." I don't know," Charity replied. "I've never sent my children out with strangers. You hear so many stories of how some people treat young boys and girls that work for them. Just last month, and Didi ran away from the home in a nitcher she was sent to. Did you see the marks on her legs? Her mother wept bitterly. She told me what had occurred when she passed by my stall on the market. She said they'd starved and beaten her whenever she did something wrong. No, Ada, I can't be alive and let someone do that to any of my children. It can't happen. She shook her head vehemently. But you know them, the Akedis, Ada said. They come home every year. She was the lady that presented Father Mike with a goat last Christmas. They seem quite well to do. I know some people are wicked, but others are genuinely good people. They just prefer bringing someone they know into their home. You should at least meet her before deciding. I've been their family seamstress for over five years. She walked past my shop one day and rightly concluded that I was neat and affordable. So I make dresses she can show off with in the city, paying less for them and even getting better results. I'm her best kept secret. Ada winked at her friend. I know who they are, Charity said. Her husband Chidi's from this village. I know he left in his teens, but he comes every year as his brothers do. I don't know his wife or what kind of person she is. 
I see the family in church, but you know a lot of people come back for Christmas with their families, and the village becomes twice its size, bustling with activities. It's sometimes difficult to keep up with the new arrivals and really getting to know them. Let me think about it. Kenneth said that he isn't willing to pay for another exam. He seems to think she failed on purpose. He says he has better things to do with his hard-earned money. I'm saving, so maybe I can pay for it on my own. I just don't want her to laze around for a year and lose focus. Ada studied her friend thoughtfully. She was one of the few people who knew what had really happened to charity. Ada admired all the sacrifices that she had made in bringing up five children on her own. It had not been easy, but maybe Bernadette was not university material. Failing once was not an indication that she wasn't, but she did not want Charity to be disappointed. She would arrange a meeting with Mrs. Akidi. Ada, too, did not care for the company Bernadette kept. This will cheer you up. Chin and Ye came to my shop today. I could describe the material for you, but a picture is better than a thousand words, and trust me, this you need to see to believe. I managed to get a photograph. Take a look. To stay up to date with Patricia as Sedeq Bega's work, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.